Did you know that Orion makes three different smartphone adapters for telescopes? They are the SteadyPix EZ, the SteadyPix Quick, and the SteadyPix Pro. This chunky beast right here is the SteadyPix Pro version. This thing weighs in over a pound. This thing almost needs a license to carry, not here in Texas, of course. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you three very important things. First, I'm going to show you how to set this up hardware-wise, how to put a phone in it, how to put an eyepiece in it, and how to hook it up to your telescope. Secondly, I'm going to show you how to set up the camera app software on your phone so that you can take excellent astrophotos. And third, which is a bonus if you stay until the end, I'm going to show you how to take these photos without ever having to actually touch the smartphone. That means you will be able to eliminate all vibration. Let's go. This particular unit was lent to me by an accomplished astrophotographer named Christopher Beck. I put links to his Twitter and Mastodon accounts in the description box below. Now with other adapters, I usually put the eyepiece in first, but not this one. Let's go ahead and put the phone in right now. First of all, I've got these uh, all the way out to their extents. These are the clamps. So I've got these out as far as they'll go. And one note of caution about that, my phone is 3.3 inches wide. And that seems to be the absolute widest that this adapter will handle. So if your phone is wider, you'll either need to remove it from the case or just get a different adapter. Let's go ahead and install it. Like that. Once you get it in there, snug it down with this bolt head and this bolt head. All right. Not too tight, though. You want it to be tight enough so that it doesn't fall out, but you don't want it to be so tight that it breaks the phone or the case or even triggers the volume buttons, which are being squished down here, depending on the model. Now we need to adjust the phone location relative to the eyepiece mount hole right here. It's best to do this with the eyepiece out, but there is one thing we need to adjust. Let's get this little clamp as close as possible to what it will be. So I'm going to take the eyepiece and just drop it in there temporarily. It's pretty loose. I'm going to tighten this so that it's pretty close, but still not tight. Okay, that's that's pretty snug. All right, so now what we have to do is adjust the camera location relative to the main uh, metal frame here so that the camera is right in the middle of where the eyepiece is going to go. The SteadyPix Pro allows us to move the phone in the in the X direction by turning this screw, and the Y direction by turning this screw. All right. So let's try to get the camera as centered as possible. You're going to have to trust me on this. Everything is black, but I'm going to be moving it so that the camera on the, on the phone is centered in the middle. Okay, it's pretty centered. So now we're going to install the eyepiece and clamp it down. Turn this. And again, I'm going to clamp it so that it's tight enough so that everything is snug, but I don't want to break the eyepiece. Now, keep in mind that all this weight of the adapter in the phone is going to be hanging off of the eyepiece right here, off of this barrel. So there we have the hardware all set up. I should mention that this adapter will clamp down on pretty much most of the inch and a quarter standard eyepieces but I've found that it won't clamp down on the two inch eyepieces. Um, and, and some of the inch and a quarter eyepieces I have, they're actually so large that it, it won't clamp down on it. If you need that, if you needed to clamp down on the larger two inch eyepieces, then you'll have to get something like the Celestron XYZ, which I've already done a detailed review on in another video. Of course, I'll put the link to that down in the description box below. So with the eyepiece in and it's all snugged down, now we need to turn on the phone and launch the camera app. Okay, now we're going to launch the camera app. And you can see it's not quite centered. We have kind of this almond shaped. Uh, it needs to go a little bit this way and a little bit that way, I think. So let's go ahead and adjust it this way first. Whoops, that's the wrong direction. All right, now I think we need to adjust it this direction. We're looking to kind of get concentric circles. And that's actually, that's actually pretty good. Right? That's pretty good. I would say that we have everything lined up. Now I'm going to show you what some consider the hardest part, and that is setting up the camera app. But I promise you, it's not too bad.
Okay, first things first. If you ever point a camera up into the night sky, the autofocus algorithms that are built in seem to go haywire and has a really hard time focusing on anything, either the moons or the constellations. So one of the things we'll need to do is set your phone to manual focus. And we're also going to need to get some control over the brightness because many of the night sky targets are either too bright, like the moon, or they're too dim, like constellations. Fortunately, phones like the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus have a feature built right into the stock camera app called Pro Mode. Here's how you get to it. I click on the word more, and that's going to bring up several options. And here's the Pro one. On this camera, it's in the top left, so I'll push Pro. And we see we have access to several different options. Now, the most important one is here, the manual focus. It says MF, which always makes me laugh. I think it's something that you know Samuel L. Jackson is probably uh, saying there. But no, 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 no. That stands for manual focus. So you push MF. And it brings up this little sliding scale. And over on the right, we have a mountain. That means the phone is focused to infinity. And in astronomy, that's what you want. And just for uh, completeness, if you slide the scale all the way down here, it shows a little flower, and that means it's going to be focused on things really close. But we don't want that. We want it to be focused to infinity, so focus it on the mountain. And again, it's in manual focus mode right now. That means when I point this up at a dark sky, it won't continuously hunt for focus. Next up, let's talk about the uh, light sensitivity or the ISO setting. This particular phone has a range of 800, right there, all the way down to 50. So what does this do? Well, this essentially makes your phone either more sensitive to light or less sensitive to light. Now, where would this come in handy? Well, if you're pointing this at a really dark spot in the sky, let's say a constellation, you're going to need all the light you can get. So you would set the ISO to maximum 800. But if you're pointing this at the full moon, which is going to be so bright, it's going to wipe out your image. It's going to basically overwhelm it. I would turn the ISO all the way down to 100 or, or lower. You can play with this until you get it just right. Next up is the shutter speed. Uh, shutter speed sort of has a relationship with brightness, right? Right now it's set for fractions of a second, so 1 125th of a second. This goes all the way up to 10 seconds. That means if I were to push the shutter button, it would essentially open the, the, the digital or virtual shutter and leave it open, exposing it to whatever image for 10 seconds. That could come in handy uh, for super dark objects in the sky, but you have to keep in mind that if you're zoomed in very far, um, you know, the night sky objects move. So if you leave this camera shutter open for 10 seconds, you're, gonna, you're actually going to get streaks. So you have to be kind of careful there. When I'm trying to photograph, say, Jupiter, which is actually surprisingly bright, I will turn the shutter speed down to about 1 350th of a second, and I'll turn the ISO up to about 400. Now, those are not written in stone. You can play with either of these settings and get it just right for your particular camera. And now for a top tip. I'm going to go back to the menu that we have. Oops, go to more. There actually exists a pro mode for video on these phones too. You can see right here, pro video. And it brings up very similar controls. You have an ISO light sensitivity setting. You have uh, shutter speed and you have focus. And it gives you uh, access to manual focus. Uh, this comes in handy if you're going to be trying to do what's called stacking, which is a, a post-processing of things. Like if you record uh, a planet or a moon or something like that, you can put it into software tools afterwards that take the video and they do special things with it to get even sharper images. Okay, so I'm going to put it back into pro photo mode. And let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how to put this on the telescope and take a picture. All right, so here we have our Ryan X-T8 uh, 8-inch Dobsonian. We're going to set the whole contraption in there and lock it in. Now, this is all pretty heavy, so the first thing you'll notice is that it causes it to fall down, and that's okay. I have these handy-dandy magnetic sliding uh, counterweights, right? They're wrapped in cloth. I actually have a whole video that shows how to make these. They're, you can make them at home. They're pretty cheap. But you move this until you get it just balanced. And now we're going to aim it at Jupiter. So I'm going to go ahead and push the shutter button and see if it takes a picture. Uh, you'll notice that when I push the button, and when it actually takes the picture, you'll notice that it actually shakes. Right? Uh, and that, of course, brings us to 
the third bonus tip. So if you like what you've seen, go ahead and push the like and subscribe buttons and leave a comment if you can. I'd love to hear how you're progressing in this hobby of astrophotography. But let's get on to this third bonus, and that is basically how to take pictures without shaking the camera. You may have noticed that whenever you push the shutter button out on the telescope, everything vibrates a little bit. So that's going to mess up your photos. Now there's a couple ways that you can get around this. The easiest, obviously, is to put a time delay, put a two second delay on there. So you push the button, it starts to count down, and by the time it gets to the end, everything has settled down. I'll put that back on off. The second way that you can do this is a really fun one. You can have your phone take a picture when you say the word cheese. You see that? It took a picture. Cheese. Right? So you can, if you're taking lots of pictures, you can run around saying cheese, 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 oops, cheese, cheese, cheese. <laughs> and you can sound just like a lunatic. But uh, the best way that I've actually found, and I've been using this for a long time, is I went on Amazon and I got one of these Bluetooth shutter buttons. They're between $10 and $15. Uh, basically, you, hook it, you link it up to your phone, and whenever you push the button, it takes a picture. And it, you can take a lot. So I'm taking lots of pictures right now just by pushing that button. So give these shutter release mechanisms a try and leave a comment down below telling me which one works best for you. Now it's time for my final review of this as a camera adapter. The Steadypix Pro works really well. It's, it's chunky, it's heavy, you have to make sure you have a counterweight on your telescope or else your telescope will keep dipping down. And you know, there's only really one downside to this and that is how you clamp onto your smartphone because uh, it will sometimes clamp down on the volume buttons and it will cause your phone to act a little bit squirrely. So you'll have to adjust this clamp pressure until you get it just right. Now, speaking of adapters, on the channel here, we have lots of reviews for various uh, smartphone adapters, including the Celestron Next YZ and the generic adapter. If you'd like to see the reviews for these two adapters, I have links to those also down in the description box. Now, when you're taking your astrophotos, if you want to get the most perfectly focused astrophotos, you're going to need a Batnov mask, and you can make these yourselves. If you want to learn how you can do that, check out this video over here. Now, if you want to hear the craziest one-minute history of the word lens, then check out this video over here. Like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Clear skies, everybody.